Hi, it's Chris with Implied Music. Is it possible to be a theorist of your own music? My answer is yes. In fact, I would say unequivocally, you must be a theorist of your own music. Yesterday, my hands dropped into um, a little something that I, I love the sound of, but I wasn't sure what exactly was going on. Why do I like it? Well, record it, figure out why you like it. Let's take a look at what happened when I did. I think everybody's had the experience of hearing a new song or a new piece of music and wondering, wow, what is that magical combination of sounds? And that happens to me all the time. And I'll go and I'll figure out the tune and then I'll discover, well, it's pretty simple. <laughs> Often it's very simple. In fact, our expectations of what's good and what works is shaped by conventions that are really well established. And a lot of people just follow them unconsciously, right? And, and that's not a bad thing necessarily. You may not need to know what you're doing to make good music, but I think for me, I'm always interested in what makes me tick because I always want to go like that little extra step and it's sort of hard to go the extra step without thinking about what I'm doing. Well, this is what happened yesterday when I was playing the piano. I played these two voicings. This is a rootless voicing of B flat seven, and we'll talk about that in a second. And this is just a straight up G flat major seven voicing root up to the seventh. Now, the first voicing is perhaps a little bit easier to, uh, sorry, a little harder to visualize because there's no root in it. But here's the seventh, and here's the third. The C is the ninth, and the G is the 13th. This is actually a rootless voicing of B flat seven that I play quite comfortably all the time. It's just part of sort of my practiced lexicon of chords. And then going to this voicing here, it sounded like a G flat major seven to me. And in fact, so as I worked with it a little bit more, I said, okay, well, I'm gonna put the roots on and see what I get. So here's here it is, the same thing with roots. perhaps a little bit easier to hear. If you add up all these notes, there's a couple of sort of unusual things, but I'm going to slip it over here like this. It's not obviously any one scale. Um, the big tip off is that. A little bit deeper as I listen to it, I realize that B flat seven is the five of E flat. And then if I played an E flat root with that voicing, I got a really fairly solid sounding five, one in E flat minor. I might play the five chord a little bit differently if I was really thinking about going to E flat minor though, and my ear obviously wasn't thinking minor. It was thinking um, G flat major. So now I'm stuck with some questions. First of all, I think I have to say, based on what's coming next, that this, is my scale for the B flat seven chord. And that scale is the fifth mode of the ascending melodic minor of E flat. It's a great dominant chord scale. The fifth mode of the ascending melodic minor. The ascending melodic minor is unique in that it has just a regular old set of notes, one, two, three, four, five in minor, and then major six, major seven. And its modes are great fun to play with. But for the G flat major seven chord, I have a D flat. And the D flat, of course, is not in the scale. That's a D, that's a D flat. I'm switching modes as I go. And you know what? That's okay. I had to analyze myself. And I guess what I noticed was something that I already knew about myself, which is that I love the sound of the melodic minor mode and I like modal exchange. I like changing horses in midstream. It's um, a beautiful mellow sound. When 
I'm playing music that uses modal exchange or even uses unusual modes, I use a little trick which, you know, was taught me years ago, which is to emphasize the notes the within the scale that are different, emphasize the notes that are different from each other as the modes change, and are different from or different from what we expect from the major scale. So in the case of the ascending melodic minor, the run of whole steps is the thing that catches our ear. And then in the case of this uh, piece or this little combination of chords here, switching from the D natural to the D flat is the thing which I wanted to pivot on and make use of. Something that jazz musicians do all the time, but has a lot of application in symphonic music, in cinematic music, in any music that uses terrains and textures to move forward. And it can give you a satisfying shifts. If you want to lift yourself out of sort of strong tonic dominant relationships, these kinds of relationships can be effective. We have a dominant chord, B flat seven. We'd expect it to go to E flat major or minor. It doesn't go to E flat minor. It goes to another chord from the system, partially satisfies our ear, but gives us a little something else to chew on. Hey, I hope this has been useful. Like and subscribe. And if you ding the bell, you'll be notified when I do my videos. I'm doing videos every day now. I'll see you next time. Thank mm -hmm. you.